What's going on guys? Welcome to Everything Always. My name is Michael Roman, aka All Fires. Now alongside the incredible slate reveals this past weekend were two trailers that have not yet been shown to the public and probably won't for some time. The first trailer for Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania and the first trailer for the upcoming Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Now while I'm definitely going to weigh in on the Quantumania footage because I feel like there is a lot going on there, it's actually sent me down so many rabbit holes that the video is not done yet. I've actually lost a little bit of sleep. All this for a trailer that isn't even out. I don't want to talk about it. We'll talk about it during the video. Today, we're going to go over the Guardians 3 footage in its entirety, and there's quite a bit still going on here. It's pretty dense, but it's not too hard to understand how it sets up Guardians 3 and the main thematic that's going to go through the narrative as it ties up all of the loose ends for these characters and where it leaves them. We're going to break down what they showed during the Comic-Con footage. I'll take you scene by scene, talk about exactly what happened, and of course, annotate it where I can. But first, if you could grab the subscribe button, we do daily Marvel content at the channel, and that's all we do. Everything from official Easter egg breakdowns, trailers, and reviews, to the occasional industry insider report, and everything in between. So if that sort of thing's for you, hit the sub button, leave a comment down below that will automatically enter you to win our ongoing PS5 giveaway. If you want, stick around to the end of the video. We'll get into all the giveaway stuff again there. Okay, so the trailer opens up with the very first scene. The Guardians are in a rather panicked state, getting ready for a meeting they didn't know they had. They're on their ship. You see their ship being drawn into a bigger ship. It's at that moment Star-Lord looks a little shocked and not too happy to see that it's Ravengers, but then Nebula is the only one who's calm amongst them. Says that it's an appointment that she made, and Peter Quill says, oh, okay, it's cool. And then she goes, yeah, I made it with Gamora. To which he, of course, looks shocked, and you get one of those bass drops as Gamora makes her way through the group. Looks like she's now running the Ravagers and says, you're early. Now, the camera makes sure to hang on Peter Quill's face so we, the audience, can take in the same moment he's taking in the realization he's finally found Gamora, something he's been looking for since the events of Avengers Endgame. But everything about Zoe Zeldana's performance in this scene make sure to tell you she is a completely different character. Her body language, the way she talks, the way she said you're early, she looks as maniacal, okay, yeah, we know the Ravagers are a pretty silly dumb bunch, but as maniacal as the rest of the Ravagers standing around her. Mantis is now viewable over Star-Lord's right shoulder. What I will say about this is even though I saw some people point out that this felt like a similar moment to Thor and Jane, Thor finding Jane Foster in a place he didn't expect, wielding Mjolnir the same way now you have Star-Lord finding Gamora leading the Ravagers in a place that he didn't expect, I can tell you sincerely, those scenes felt nothing like each other. Synchronicitous details, I'll admit, but you can tell right off the bat from the tone of this trailer that Guardians 3 is going to be a heavy, heavy film. Now, the song that plays is the Flaming Lips, Do You Realize? And the lyrics specifically and directly narrate exactly what's going on in the trailer. Do you realize you have the most beautiful face? Do you realize we're floating in space? Do you realize that happiness makes you cry? Do you realize that everyone you know someday will die. And during that sequence, you actually see flashbacks to Gamora and Quill as they almost kiss from the original Guardians movie. You also see them all in spacesuits deployed in space, literally following the lyrics exactly that happiness makes you cry. And as Peter Quill tells Gamora, you were everything to me, she replies, that person wasn't me. Now the next is a flashback sequence where we see the origin for Rocket. It's a baby raccoon reaching his hand out, sort of looking scared, and you see the hand reaching back of the High Evolutionary, which ultimately was revealed to be Chuck Woody Awuji, as we had widely reported across the industry. And he showed up at Comic-Con in full costume, of course. So no more sort of guessing if that's the villain of the film or that's who we're seeing here in the trailer. And I can't help but think that this moment in the trailer is sort of an inverted play on the image from the top of the Sistine Chapel that Michelangelo painted where God is reaching out to Adam and they're almost touching. Now, critics and theologians alike, basically the consensus is, is that this is meant to represent humanity as Adam only need put a little more effort in that God is reaching out to us by his intention and his gaze fully extended finger and if we just put in a little more effort we could touch God but perhaps James is doing a little critique of his own here and this would certainly be maybe the point of view from the high evolutionary but we already know as recounted in Guardians 1 that Rocket does not have a fond memory of how he was created this is a lot more along the lines of Dr. Frankenstein and the creation the monster dialectic that he even says himself he didn't ask to be ripped apart and put back together and we know from the comic book origin of the high evolutionary regardless of how he sees himself that he's ultimately a villain and all of these experiments are cruel 
We then get a montage of characters in ways we probably haven't seen them before just yet. We see Quill and Drax actually wearing the blue Ravages uniforms that we saw Rocket most likely wearing in Avengers Endgame or something similar to that. Drax is also wearing clothes, even though he, I don't think he's worn a shirt at any point throughout the entirety of his time on screen. Uh, we also see Star-Lord using his blasters with Groot. Groot finally looks like he has passed the point of being a teenager, or if he is, he's really, really close to adulthood. One small fact about Groot, he can actually age himself at will. So you have to imagine he may have stayed a kid or an adolescent a lot longer than he had to, and maybe at this point he's finally choosing to grow up. Now, finally, we get to see our very first look at Will Poulter's Adam Warlock. And I have to say, not only am I super stoked for this character, but he looked pretty comic accurate. Will Poulter definitely looked like I imagined Adam Warlock to look. And while at first I have to admit, I maybe didn't exactly see this casting, it, it was great. And I can't wait to hear the rest of the comic book community's reaction to this. Speaking of which, Someone actually tweeted at James Gunn that they wished the rest of us could see the trailer and he tweeted out, hey, please be patient. Here's the thing. The special effects aren't quite done. We still need to tweak it. We just got done filming anyway. Just be patient with that. And that's really, I think what this comes down to is not only are we way ahead in the timeline for marketing, at least along the new MO of Marvel Studios, we used to get the first trailer six months out. It appears as though they've shifted to putting trailers out a little closer to release dates. They know people are still gonna go, but the special effects for these things just take so 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 much time we're hearing more and more about that recently yeah guys i saw all the reports about people complaining about the vfx conditions first of all that is actually nothing new in the industry some of you may remember that animated movie life of pi that won all those awards yeah the animation house that did that film actually went bankrupt years afterwards vfx is horribly underpaid it is an absolutely cutthroat industry and in case you weren't filled in on the details, it's actually pretty easy. These art houses, these firms that are making these VFX have to bid on the projects by total amount paid for the project, which means if they say, hey, we're going to do these VFX for your Disney Plus TV show Moon Knight for $2 million, but it ends up costing them 2.5 in man hours to get the final product done, well, then that's their problem. That's how you end up with the house that did Life of Pi going under and upside down. The reason I bring all this up is if you read those articles recently and you were outraged and want to do something to support the artists, you've got to be more patient. One of the ways they relieve stress is these crazy deadlines. One of the way you relieve crazy deadlines is you give people more time to work on them. So as in James was saying to that person in that tweet, personally, hey, we just got done filming. I have to get into editing. We have to get the VFX done. Being patient for these trailers and first looks is how you support the artists and you tell Disney it's okay. Take as much time as you need. Don't crush these artists under the weight of crazy deadlines. And uh, that's just the way I'm going to start looking at it from now on. When first I would complain about why we haven't seen a Thor trailer. Why did it take so long to get the Spider-Man trailer? Give these artists time to do their best work. We all want it that way anyway. Let me know all your thoughts down below. Yes, I will break down what's going on in the Quantumania trailer. Probably have that out tomorrow uh, morning or tomorrow night. In the meantime, let's get into the giveaway stuff before I let you go. Okay, we're still giving away PlayStation 5s. Every 20,000 subscribers all the way up to a million. The next milestone is 980. We're almost at it. If you want to be entered to win, all you have to do, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment down below because it's truly random. The more videos you comment on, the better chance you have of winning. All winners will be announced at the end of videos the same way we're doing here. The best way to keep up with the content has always been to hit the notification bell with all notifications turned on. And as always, if you liked today's video, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit the like button. My name is Michael Roman. You can find me in a couple of places in Instagram and Twitter at I am Fires. You can also find me on Spotify, YouTube, Amazon, Apple, iTunes under the name All Fires. And if you want to go one step further and support me as a content creator without spending a dollar, I am in a competition now to win a huge live opening show in Hollywood. Uh, I do music under All Fires. I just mentioned that. I know major boomer alert here, but you can register for free with a Facebook account. Why they do that, I have no idea, but I guess people can spam with Gmail accounts. I'll leave a link down in the description in the comments. Presumably, this competition is going to run if I keep winning for the next couple of months till February 15th and you can vote for free every day again with a Facebook account uh, you don't have to do that I know I'm asking a lot but also if you've watched my content for a while and want to support me as a content creator and help me win this show that'd be awesome or don't no worries either way I'll see you in the next one